Welcome to the Epic Company Culture Podcast, where your host, Josh Sweeney, will give you, the business leaders, HR professionals, and company culture aficionados, the knowledge you need to take your company culture to the next level. Hello, my name is Josh Sweeney, and welcome to the Epic Company Culture Podcast. Before I get started, I would like to thank Prototype Prime for this amazing podcasting booth. The topic of today is hiring tips for remote employees. When you have remote employees, there are certain challenges that come into play. And when I mean remote employees, I'm going to focus more on, I'm going to focus on remote employees, contractors, and even part-time remote contract people. So think uh, I have a remote employee that's not in my headquarters that works from home. Uh, maybe to be a salesperson in another region or a resource in another region. Uh, I'm also thinking outsourcing. So if you're hiring somebody on Upwork for maybe only 10 hours a week of work, uh, part-time, or any other contractor that you have that's not in the headquarters. So when I say remote employees, I want to give you a broad sense of what that is around. It's not just full-time, it's part-time. It's uh, Upwork and outsourced, and it's remote people that are working from home and not in your headquarters. So that gives you a little bit of umbrella to, to put the context under. Now, the problem that I see with, or the challenge I see with remote employees and the experiences I've had and, and visualized uh, or seen in working with other companies is that oftentimes because it's not a full-time W-2 hire in their office, people tend to skip their hiring process. So the first thing they do is they they think, oh, well, this is a 20-hour-a-week person. They're in Manila or they're across, you know, on the East Coast and we're on the West Coast. And they almost lower their guard a bit and think that, oh, well, since it's a part-time resource, we don't have to do as much due diligence. And I find that that is extremely detrimental. Uh, we've, we've done this ourselves. Uh, we've gone to outsource certain tasks and we've gone to get resources and we, for some reason, skipped our hiring process. We're like, ah, oh, it's 10 hours a week. It's a light amount of work. You know, we, we'll find them online and whatever it might be. And you skip that hiring process. And all of a sudden you revert back to the challenges that you had before you even had a hiring process where you're not getting the person that you really need, right? You're not getting the level of talent that you need. So, the solution to that is follow your hiring process. If you're hiring somebody anywhere, even if it's a small task, uh, within reason, you want to make sure that you're following that hiring process. You're sending the culture questions. You're doing the background check. You're checking references because you still need a high level of quality work from this person. And in order to get that, you have to go through that process. Now, Problem two that we see with remote workers, and we see this a little more on some of the outsourcing job sites and, and other uh, situations where you may run into these outsource resource type firms is what I call the bait and switch. So what happens is, is you go on a website or you call a firm and you need a, a new virtual assistant or you need a graphic designer, whatever it might be, and you need small tasks done on a recurring basis. So you know, again, you may skip your hiring process. You kind of lean on them as the experts of this outsourcing, and it may you may be new to outsourcing for the business um, and for these lighter tasks. And when you lean on them, you end up speaking with somebody that is very knowledgeable and that you can communicate with and that you think is actually the person doing the work. And then when you actually, then when you sign the contract or when you uh, hire them on the, you know, the outsourcing website or whatever it might be, whatever system you're using, all of a sudden you get the switch. Now you get, you start getting product, uh, production of content or you get results from that work and you feel like the results I'm getting don't necessarily match the quality of the person I spoke to. Well, what we found is sometimes some of these firms do the bait and switch. They let you talk to their best person and then when you sign, they switch you over to the lowest cost resource and you don't get the outcome that you're looking for. So there's a couple of really easy solutions to this that we like to use. The first one is, again, don't skip your hiring process. Go through the hiring process process and establish that you're expecting that you're talking to the person that's doing the work. So you have to be um, explicit and ask the question, 
are you the one that's going to be doing the work or am I speaking to you so that you can introduce me to another team member? If I, if you're speaking to me so that you can introduce me to another team member, then I want to speak to that team member now and we're going to go ahead and start the interview process with the team member that I'm going to get. So that's one way to keep the bait and switch from happening. Another way that I've found that's really helpful is when we get a remote resource contractor, remote employee, whatever it is, we require a video interview. And what I've found is we are, again, we're explicit. When we do this interview, I'm going to call you and we're going to maybe do a Skype meeting. That's most very most often. And that's the common way that I see people do these meetings. We're going to Skype you and we're going to need you to share your camera. So you're going to need to be on camera. We're going to be speaking face to face. So please make sure that you have that ready. Now, it's also a courtesy for people who work from home. Maybe they're not ready to be on camera and you just spring it on them. Uh, but we like to tell them ahead of time. What we've seen oftentimes is... With that step, we get people who are like, oh, well, I don't have a camera. Okay, well, that's kind of odd. Most people have a camera, especially on a laptop they're built in these days. Maybe they're working for a desktop and they legitimately don't have a camera. Well, again, that's a place where you know, you're going to have some challenges interacting with this person. Also, it keeps the bait and switch out. I can't see, uh, it's not putting me in a situation where I see somebody and their profile and their picture and who I think I'm building this relationship with and who I spoke to the first time and then I get on camera and now it's a different person. So what we're doing is we're making sure that that remote employee is going to be able to turn on their camera. The other thing that we do in utilizing that camera is establishing that our meetings will be via video. So in Epic Culture, we use Google Hangouts. And in order to build better relationships, we always require that they turn their camera on. So we have resources in other parts of the world, in other offices and and different locations. And we require, it's not only that you get on Google Hangout, but you turn on that camera because we want that face-to-face -face rapport. So in hiring a remote employee, we're able to establish ahead of time, not only are you going to share your camera during the interview process, but you're also going to be on weekly scrums and other meetings where you're going to be expected to share your camera. Now, this has the also the, the extra side effect of not only negating the bait and switch, but it also establishes, do they have the hardware and the bandwidth and are they, are they at a location where they can consistently get the work done? We're used to being in the US. Sometimes we work with people in Europe. Europe and other countries where the infrastructure is great. I've also run into situations where we've had people that we would love to work with, but they always seem to have some sort of challenge with infrastructure. Oh, the lights are out today. Oh, the internet's down. Or, uh, oh, well, I didn't drive to the internet cafe that I work from today because of whatever situation it is. So by making them share a camera, you're also seeing, you know, where are they at? Oh, where are you working from? Are you working from home? Are you working from a cafe? Uh, do they have the bandwidth to share their camera? So are you going to run into these other issues that you just wouldn't normally think of? And I think the camera really helps offset that and uncover those issues early. The last thing I want to throw in for a hiring tip for hiring remote employees or contractors is the time zone expectations. In the US, it seems that uh, the expectation is that you're going to work whichever time zone that you're in, and that can cause some challenges. So if we're on the East Coast and the contractor or the remote employees on the West Coast, we need to establish early on what the requirements are. Is there an overlap time? Now in the East Coast, West Coast situation, there's a good bit of overlap. But if you go from East Coast over into Europe, where they're six and seven hours ahead, the overlap starts to fade away really quickly. And then you go over to the Philippines and they're a full 12 hours ahead of the East Coast time. So what we see is uh, that you need to establish those expectations early. Some people are going to be able to offset those. Some like working nights or mornings more than others. And setting those expectations early on are going to make it extremely helpful in working together and having that overlapping work time. So as a recap, don't skip your hiring process. Put them through the same ringer that you would put any employee or prospect, a prospective employee. Um, 
be careful of the bait and switch. Use that camera. Make sure you're leveraging that video interaction to ensure you're uh, speaking and interviewing the person that you're actually going to get. And then establish the time zone expectations and the overlap early on. So we hope that these are helpful tips and we want you to think about how you can ensure that you're hiring the right remote employees and ensuring that they match the quality of the employees that you have in your headquarters. Thank you for tuning in to today's episode of the Epic Company Culture Podcast with Josh Sweeney. If you enjoyed this content, please subscribe on iTunes, SoundCloud, or Stitcher. For additional content and transcripts, visit epicculture.co. If you have questions or topics you would like us to address or expand on, tweet us at epicculture1 or email at podcast at epicculture.co.